Mm -hmm. We're going to return to the Diamond Bank and getting access to Diamond's story uh, in a short while. So uh, stick around, folks, who will get to that story. But what, what do we know as we speak? Access Bank and Diamond Bank are now meeting with the central bank uh, officials in Abuja to secure regulatory approval for what they spend the entire weekend talking about. Of course, everyone sees this as taken as given from the side of the financial regulator, that is the central bank. After a very burning sky bank, meltdown or bridging to become Polaris Bank, the central bank does not seem to have the appetite to put any money, not a dime, into any bank struggling anymore. Sources are told Business Morning Gully today that the central bank is interested in voluntary takeover acquisitions, mergers and acquisitions, whatever you want to do, do it. But the central bank is not giving anybody a cover as we speak. So the Access Bank and Diamond Bank Corporate wedlock is a voluntary one, does not require any taxpayers' money. So that's where we stand as of today. But we're still waiting for after the approval from the central bank. If all go well today, then you have the approval necessary from the SEC because this is a combination, an exchange of shares. That's what it is. We don't have the figure yet. How much Access Bank will be buying Diamond Bank? Will it be for cash? and shares or will it be for cash only or will it be just exchange of shares without parting with any cash from access bank to diamond bank this is what a bit of unwrapping <clears throat> m a is all about or takeover sometimes it comes with very huge amount of money you pay the uh, the share the, the directors of the uh, banks you're buying or the company you're buying then some get some shares in exchange for the new company all that will get the details. We don't have that for now. So, but of course, the SEC and the stock exchange approvals will be needed since both companies are listed on the main board. Uh, if this business combination uh, go through, then you'll be see the end of the Pascal Dossier's dynasty uh, in the Nigerian banking sector, closing, putting a final closure to one of Nigeria's uh, family banking business that we have. Still about one or two still hanging there on Broad Street. We'll get to that in the days, weeks, and months ahead. But of course, some folks are already on, on Twitter asking questions about that bank as well. Uh, let's leave that for today. But of course, we're focusing on Access and Diamond Bank. Access Bank has a history of uh, looking for other banks to buy on Broad Street. Access Bank moved strongly but failed to acquire Union Bank in 2004-2005. Then it waited a few more years to 2009, then picked up into troubled Intercontinental Bank, which the then Central Bank took down due to a lot of infractions and other stories. Uh, this, we all know that. You can just Google that up. And after that, Access Bank is now ready again to pick up another bank, uh, Diamond Bank, that is. Okay, let's uh, leave that for now. Market's still digesting all of that story. But some of us are just fresh <clears throat> back from Egypt, Cairo, Egypt, where Nigeria had a very glorious performance. Uh, the first intra-Africa trade fair organized by the African Bank uh, for 2018. This is the first ever. Thousands of delegates and exhibitors from around the world. Nigeria had about 140 exhibitors at the conference uh, exhibiting Nigeria's shoes and bags and things like that that's quite big including food items food products uh quite amazing so the uh vice president professor Yami, uh Shibajo was the one who gave uh that very interesting talk about nigeria's creative industry fashion entertainment Nollywood, and of course we had quite, uh, for those of you who are online, you already saw what Two-Face, the DBA, and the rest of them, Alibaba did on the Nigeria Day. It was last week, Thursday. And in case you missed uh, the vice president's speech, uh, this is for the record, and we're just playing that back for you. Take a listen to the vice president speaking on Nigeria Day. Abubakar Tafar Nigeria's post-independence prime minister. In 1963, on the occasion of the establishment of the Organization of African Unity, said, and I quote, I think we will arrive at a very successful establishment of the African common market because it is good for African trade. For example, the interstate trade in Africa is 10%, while 90% is done with other countries outside Africa. There is no reason why we should not increase interstate trade on this continent, end of quote. 
Mr. Fawale was of the minds of many African leaders then and now. This is why this first African trade fair is an extra special event for us. It is the beginning of the coming to pass of one of Africa's favorite dreams, increasing intra-African trade, trade between and amongst ourselves in pragmatic and sustainable ways. And for also for enabling us to live our dreams and the hopes and aspirations of our founding fathers, we must commend and thank the African Union and the African Bank for organizing and the government and people of Egypt for hosting this great fair and the excellent facilities that have been placed at our disposal. Therefore, it is with great pride that we celebrate the dreams of Abu Bakr Kafar Balewa and all the fathers of our continent as we take part in this first ever intra-African trade fair. Nakila places the high premium on the economic integration of the continent. And we recognize also trade as a veritable tool towards the Africa we all want, an industrialized, prosperous, and peaceful Africa, where we generate enough opportunities to accommodate the growing numbers of our people. The numbers entering the job market yearly in Africa is daunting. And it is clear that increased intra-African trade is one of the surest ways of creating the jobs that are so desperately needed. Therefore, this intra-African trade fair, bringing together business communities, including innovators and creators, both in the merchandise and services industry, from the 55 African Union members and beyond, is a remarkable achievement in and of itself. In order to increase trade, we in Nigeria tasked ourselves to diversify our export basket. This became one of our many policy priorities. Based on this focus, we modified and updated existing economic policies and also developed robust policies to facilitate the diversification of our economy. Today we have come to the Intra-African Trade Fair with a delegation of policy makers and services, market operators who have an array of goods and services that are as rich and as diverse as the people of our great nation. In the second quarter report of our Bureau of Statistics, services contributed approximately 54% to the GDP with information and communication being the main drivers of growth. Clearly, one of the most remarkable developments in Nigeria's economic story is the phenomenal growth and depth of technology and innovation, with hundreds of new companies jostling for privacy in this fast-growing digital economy space. It's estimated that the digital economy in Nigeria will be worth 88 billion US dollars and add about 3 million jobs by 2021. So today we have come with some of our best digital entrepreneurs to exhibit their products and to start conversations around cooperation and partnerships that will jumpstart the continental economy and create our own Facebooks, our own Googles and Amazons. We're going to have panel discussions to hear from operators in Nigeria regarding policy initiatives and how the protection of intellectual property and help Africa secure its place in the digital age. But perhaps as exciting is the phenomenal story of Nigeria's entertainment industry, Nollywood, now considered to be the third largest film industry in the world. The Africa-wide popularity of Nollywood poignantly demonstrates that our stories are the same, our hopes and aspirations are identical, and so are our sense of fairness and justice, and also our common attachment to the uplifting notions of love, of affection, of kindness, and the victory of good over evil. So Nollywood is here with us in Cairo, and I'm sure and I hope that you'll get to meet some of our best. And the cuisine. 
Nigeria's cuisine, especially jollof rice and emboshi soup. These are, these, as you know, are already winners of the continent, loved immediately by those whose palates encountered for the first time. We've even gotten into some controversy about our assertion that Nigeria's jollof rice is the best. So we have brought with us some of our chefs to enable guests here today have a first-hand experience. This evening we will be treated to a live show and we'll have the unique opportunity of savoring some of our dishes. But we couldn't possibly be here without our world conquering fashion industry. All over the world, the unique touches of Nigerian fashion are redefined by the industry. The Nigerian fashion industry features internationally recognized labels and is a short takeaway by many who visit Nigeria. The phenomenal sellout of our Nigerian football jersey designed by Nike is good evidence of the global acceptance and the delight in Nigerian fashion. There's also an opportunity for engagement today We've not focused very much, uh, I've not focused very much in this uh, short uh, speech on uh, merchandise trade, mainly because its place is already loudly evident. But here today we have about 140 exhibitors showcasing different products, ranging from cars and armor trucks to leather, clothing, food, soap, and beauty products. Well, well. What an event this promises to be. I welcome you all to the Nigeria Day. Thank you very much. Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi uh, Oshibajo, uh, the uh, Inter-Africa Trade Fair opening Nigeria's trading, uh, Nigeria's day, uh, the event. Of course, you uh, already knew that Nigeria signed a total of 2.2 billion U.S. dollars in deals. The first $1 billion was for uh, Nigeria's trade and investment uh, deal, which will flow through uh, next in bank, Nigeria Export Import Bank, for those who are in the trade and facilitation together with the NEPC, the Export Promotion Council. And the other $1.2 billion will be to help Nigeria uh, develop export, uh, special economic zones and export processing zones. All that were part of the package. Nigeria got the highest deal signing, uh, the just concluded, of all the IETF, which is being concluded today, formally closed. Okay, let's now get back to the big story around Access Bank and Diamond Bank. What do we know at the moment? These two banks have been combined. Diamond Bank, as you may have heard, is uh, been a, uh, facing very tough times over the last few years uh, today. Diamond Bank is worth about 22 billion naira, according to Bloomberg numbers. That's about 80 uh, million US dollars. Ten years ago, Access Bank was worth about 1 billion US dollars on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. That value has since been eroded over the last 10 years to less than 100 million US dollars as we speak today. Uh, Diamond Bank is looking at 23.16 billion shares uh, in issue. Earnings per share, a negative 70 cover per share. One year return since the year started, 33.57%. No dividend has been paid or bonus in recent times. The P ratio, there was no assigning, assignment on that from uh, Bloomberg. But of course, if you look at Access, which is uh, the bank now uh, moving to uh, acquire Access Bank, of course, both parties have agreed now look, getting various regulatory approvals. Uh, Access Bank has a market cap of about 286 billion Naira. That's north of 700 million US uh, dollars with shares are standing close to 29 billion uh, on the market. Earnings per share, current earnings per share, 2 naira 32 cover, one year return, a negative 23.55% and a PE ratio of 3.10. Uh, These are some of the stories. We're going to talk more about it. But of course, we have to talk about inflation uh, climbing a little bit very, uh, trading slightly upward in November, 11.28% from 11.26%. And where are we going with that? And of course, we're taking a sneak preview of President Buhari's budget 2019. This is the final budget for President Buhari's first term in office. Uh, we have a lot to talk about uh, those four budgets, but this one is very important, 2019. One, the figure will be much smaller than 2018. Then we're looking at the uh, price of uh, crude oil 
as the being reported that the president says the economy is facing hard times. We'll talk about this today. Uh, let's uh, come back to you after the break. But we'll talk about Diamond Bank and Access Bank. <laughs>